There's always a flurry of activity as the storm is approaching and we're watching the storm track and uh, with each little shift, it, it dictates different movements that we have to do in different preparations. And uh, we're preparing for the storm, we're coordinating with all the field units, we are, are coordinating with our champion teams, which uh, do a variety of different things to prepare us for the storm. And as we're gathering data, we're also reporting data to the state EOC and we're letting the folks in Tallahassee know that we're ready and we're, we're, we're sharing information as it comes in. As we're getting ready for a storm to hit, we are making sure we have all of our staff's contact information on file so we can follow up with them. We're making sure we have our contractor information on file, uh, making sure everybody knows what their assignments are. Uh, we wanna be able to jump into action as soon as possible so that we can recover quickly that District 1 was, was so much more impacted than anywhere in the state, that Southwest Florida area. As District 5 was, was taking care of, of a lot of our roadways, it was about, uh, I think about a week or, or 10 days into the event when we sent our crews down. They stayed for over two weeks and they lived in a base camp where they just would wake up before, before daylight, they would, uh, they would eat and then they'd go out to the sites and they would pick up debris and clear the roads and then they would come back and fall asleep and then just wake up and do it all over again. We also had uh, Sanibel Island, the causeway, and Pine Island causeways that, that washed out. And between the contractors and DOT forces, we were able to restore those roadways by bringing in rock, fill material, and, uh, and, and we anticipated that being a 30-day uh, operation and within two weeks we had, we had that area open for uh, for, for service vehicles and power trucks to start rebuilding those communities. So it was an amazing uh, achievement down in Southwest Florida. We had Hurricane Ian around late September and two to three weeks after Hurricane Ian made landfall, we were still deploying our team for the level two assessments because things keep on popping up. When the water starts receding, we find new issues on our roads. It was for two to three weeks that we were still working on, on Hurricane Ian. And then the week after, we, we see that Nicole is coming. We had a, a few lessons learned that we put in place for Hurricane Nicole. We had more staff on standby that we needed to have ready to go. And that's another example when we reached out to other disciplines like, like Plimo because we knew our in-house staff was already working through EN and then we needed to have a team ready to go for Nicole. As the storm was approaching, we knew that it was going to be a big rainmaker. One of the early reports was that we had State Road 46 underwater in one particular area and uh, we we're able to get resources out there. The crews at Deland Operations worked very long hours that night and uh, put together a lane closure. That took a lot of coordination and uh, they did a great job on that. We had significant damage along A1A in Flagler and Volusia counties. So we had a team that was deployed as soon as it was safe uh, to be out there. Our number one goal was to restore mobility to the community. We see the crews on the streets and, and it's powerful, but we also have a huge team supporting them. And we have facilities to maintain, make sure they're operational and safe for our staff. We have technology to support. They do these actions 24-7. Um, we're making sure that these crews are getting food if they're not able to get to food, making sure um, all their time is properly being accounted for, so they're getting paid for their activities. Uh, there's a lot going on behind the scenes. Staff are scrambling to figure out what our needs are, coordinating with contractors all hours of the day and night to get those contracts executed so that we can get our industry partners out there to help us. It's, it's amazing to see everybody's involvement. Uh, at the DOT, we have uh, the way our system's set up. We have champion groups, and it really involves everybody. We have over 41 activities identified. The way these, these teams work and prepare for hurricanes is just amazing. They're from all different disciplines, and the way they work together uh, to make our response 
our recovery, our mitigation efforts of success is really amazing. On US 92 between uh, Daytona Beach and DeLand, we have a ditch that, that's on the north side of 92 that overtopped. It, it eventually flows into the Tomoka River. So that ditch overflowed and made 92 uh, impassable for, for traffic. Once the water came down, we saw that there was some shifting in the concrete slabs. The slabs moved and it was, uh, it was not safe. We had bike week coming up, a, a large uh, three or four day event in Daytona Beach. So what we decided to do was a, a quick emergency repair, laid asphalt over those slabs, and it made for a very smooth, uh, safe uh, area for, for the bikers to use. On A1A in, in uh, North Volusia and in Flagler County, uh, the road is extremely close to the ocean. And after Ian, we lost much of our dune, which is our shoulder. So we were left with a roadway uh, and, and the ocean right adjacent to it. We, we lost a portion of the road. It's what I call a shark bite. We, we, uh, we could either try to determine uh, a, a permanent restoration or do an emergency closure to restore the road as quickly as possible. And what we did is we, we had pre-event contractors in place. We had PNS paving, we had Halifax paving, and between those two contractors and our own in-house resources, we were able to bring in over a thousand loads of sand and uh, 2,500 uh, tons of rock, and we were able to rebuild that road within three days to get all those areas fixed and uh, you know safe for travel. We embedded our trucks into their crew to increase the size, and they just ran that sand and, and ran that rock uh, day in and day out until we, we had the road all put back together. And uh, there were some crews uh, on PNS on the paving crew. I worked with them through the night, and uh, some of those gentlemen worked over 30 hours straight, and uh, they were extremely exhausted, but the community was, was so appreciative. They were driving by and, and cheering us and, and uh, honking to us and, and, and just telling us thank you for, uh, for all the hard work, and uh, it's, it, was, it took the whole community. They, uh, they, they worked well with us. We worked with the local leaders with Flagler County and the city of Flagler Beach, and uh, together we, we had a great plan and it was coordinated and we, we hit our target of getting that quick opening. The next step is that we're working now for a permanent solution. I'd like to you know, give a shout out to all the asset maintenance, the project management and our asset maintenance teams. Um, you know, for ESU, that was the first time we ever in, implemented ESU and it was a little touch and go and the, and the conditions weren't favorable. Those teams really, um, Put, put forth the effort, you know, to, to provide a safe um, emergency shoulder use activation. And, um, you know, that, that was a big success. When we opened A1A back to traffic, it was Saturday around 5 p.m., I heard that there was this little caravan of the FDOT trucks and um, FDOT staff that was out there. I got goosebumps because it was such a, another proud moment that we were there for the community and all of us pull it together. We got people from all over the district to come help us out. Witnessing what the state has done through the recovery of Ian and Nicole, it's a whole new level of pride and, and I think there's so many goosebump worthy moments that we've witnessed that it's nice to see the impact we've done for Florida. And we, we forget or people forget that sometimes we too are the people of Florida. We're doing this for our family and our friends and our neighbors. And, it, and I appreciate what everybody has done to help out my community.